Hi, I'm going to start my comparison of the new iPad today with my Kindle up here in some bright sunlight because that is one of the starkest uh, differences that I've discovered in the early use of it. And that's that the screen on the iPad in direct sunlight is barely readable at all. And I know there's been some... Andy Anatko said that he had taken his to a beach in Massachusetts on a sunny day and he fine. I just don't understand how that's possible because even at this distance I think you're going to see that the Kindle screen you can read and you can't, there's two problems. The first problem is that it's just not bright enough and the second is that it picks up a, a total reflection, it's like a mirror. I mean, you know, if you're reading here and you've got the sun behind you, that's all you're going to see on your iPad. Whereas with the sun behind you on the Kindle, well, there's, there is a moment of glare there if you put it right there. But everywhere else, it's just the brighter the sunlight, the clearer the text that you're seeing on your Kindle. So I, I find it, for some reason, even my iPhone is does better in the direct sun than its big brother the iPad and you know that's not not all of my reading takes place at the beach but some of it does and it's nice to know that wherever I take the Kindle indoors or outdoors I'm going to be able to read it just fine if I get enough light on it. Now that we're inside the uh, iPad screen is gorgeous you know you're looking at wonderful yummy color and all of the little design tricks where you can see the covers are nice and here we are back in good old Kindle land with a nice clear screen but as the Colbert mockery said yesterday oh boy there's black and gray but that's that's the way it looks so I ordered uh, the same book at the Kindle store for iPad and the uh, iBooks and this is on the Kindle store and I'll show you some of the differences. Now it's telling me, uh, this is the good thing about the Kindle, is it's syncing to where I was last. I'm getting a good uh, horizontal view of my page here because it's set on the horizontal and it quickly goes to the vertical uh, in that view. And I've got good, uh, I can go from side to side with my finger and uh, but here's where you see some of the areas where iBooks is better. If I click on a word, let's just say kibitzing here, uh, nothing happens. No, uh, I'm not able to highlight it, to do notes or annotations, anything like that. Now we'll go to the same book in the iBook store. And, and this on the horizontal, I'm getting a nice two-page spread. And if I press on a word, nominee in this case, I get three different choices. Uh, dictionary, bookmark, or search. And if I go to dictionary, it pulls up a, a definition. It looks to me, based on a comparison I did of a, of a certain word, Fiending use fiend uses a verb on the iPad dictionary. It said no such word, and on the Kindle dictionary, it brought up fiend, and I was able to, you know, it, it was helpful. So I I think that the dictionary in iBooks is not as robust as the Oxford American Dictionary on uh, the Kindle. Now, just now we were at a restaurant, and I was reading this book. It's Game Change, which is a pretty uh, compelling book. It's very well written. So it's the kind of book you can easily fall into. But I found myself enjoying this view, which is essentially a two-page view with not much text on each page. And this business of turning the pages, uh, I thought it was kind of a gimmick. It turns out to be quite pleasurable. And uh, so that was something that, you know, was, was pretty good. You can get to the home button by touching, you go back to library, and then you're back to seeing game change on your shelf. Here's another uh, comparison of the uh, book reading 
app for Apple in the I, iBook store with the Kindle app and it's the choices that you get on font now on the Apple iBook reader I can take the font up to a very huge uh, size much larger than is my personal taste so I've got one two three I've got about three sizes that I am not using which gives me some comfort because you know I don't think my eyes are going to get any better over time but on the Kindle app when I'm reading a book uh, the biggest that I can get the type if I okay so I touch at the bottom here I have uh, I'm at the I'm at the largest available type here and it's it, it's a it's a good type for me to read at but I would like to have a few sizes bigger apparently there's only four sizes here and the smallest size is teeny and two uh, five sizes I'm sorry and when you get up to the largest size you're at about uh, where I like to read at so for the way I read advantage iBook store on the matter of font size so I've been playing with the iPad for I guess three or four hours now and I had three hours of sleep last night so I haven't been able to really dig into an organized uh, sense or a review of it in any kind so I'm going to talk sort of impressionistically at this point. When I first started reading on it I thought there's no way I would ever be able to read for an extended period of time compared to the Kindle. I, my eyes just seem to want to pick up the Kindle after staring at this bright screen. Just now at the restaurant, when I was reading a book I was really interested in, Game Change, something changed and all of a sudden my resistance to reading the iPad screen pretty much fell away. So I need to test this more to really get a feel for it. And, uh, but there has been a, a shift from total rejection of reading this way to more openness. Now the thing that uh, is also gradually coming into my awareness uh, different things happen. I was reading the, the email I find really pleasurable and uh, it's just kind of a, a nice thing to be able to see the messages pop up like this. The typing is okay although it's really awkward for me at first I can't ever figure out how to get the shift key to what I'm uh, to do what I want. But uh, someone sent me a link to uh, a video. The, other, the one thing I don't like about the uh, mail is that you have to keep switching between your accounts and if you want to go to a different account you have to go back to accounts. This is like on the iPhone and so you have to go into the one that you're looking for and that's where you'll find the, you know, in this case the message I was looking for. So this is from somebody in our building and she's included a link to a YouTube. And when this opened up the first time I was sitting on the couch and I was all of a sudden I was getting a very uh, pleasant experience of watching this video. Decent audio coming out of the built-in speaker and the imagery is pretty good. So that was pretty cool and another thing which I've I downloaded the Evernote app I use Evernote a lot. It's spectacular. The, all my uh, notebooks are arranged so I can scroll through and open a notebook and uh, the notes that are in it show up really easily. So, you know, I have a feeling that the more I spend with this thing, the more ways I'm going to find that it, it's pretty delightful. And I think it's smart that Apple sent those uh, key reviewers uh, iPads to play with for a full week because I, I think it's the kind of device your first impressions may very well uh, steer you wrong and I'm going to continue to evaluate it and uh, just try to give you more input into what I think <laughs> when I get some more sleep that's the main thing when I can start you know, talking complete sentences so that's first impressions of the iPad versus the Kindle and this is Lynn Edgerly in downtown Denver. Stay tuned.